Hey everyone, Jason Freeberg here from Snowflake, and today we're announcing an exciting new public preview for Snowpark and Snowflake Trail. This public preview includes a new log explorer in Snowsite, so you can see all of the logs that are being emitted from your store procedures, your streamlets, or other objects in your Snowflake account. The public preview also includes a new trace diagram in Snowsite, so you can see your entire Snowflake jobs from top to bottom. As we'll see in the demo, you can use this to explore your job's stored procedures, UDFs, data frames, or any other child stored procedures being called off of that job. All of these features make it so much easier to monitor and troubleshoot your Snowflake workloads. So without further ado, let's hop into a quick demo. So for this demo, we're playing the role of a hypothetical data engineer that has a table called Reviews Raw that has product reviews from their customers. And then this data gets passed through a sentiment analysis pipeline that's orchestrated with a task, and then ultimately calls a Python UDF called get sentiment that will run a basic sentiment analysis on those user reviews and rank them on a scale of zero to five. Then there's also a Java UDF that will get more information about that user based off the user ID in the base data set. Then all of this cleaned data gets written to an output table called product reviews, and then other stakeholders in our company can use Streamlet or Snowflake dashboards to explore and visualize that data. And then as all this is running, I've configured alerts and notifications. So when error logs are written from this job, I can get notified about those error logs. Now let's hop over into Snowsite, and we can see here the new log explorer that I mentioned in the intro. So if you go to monitoring and then down underneath that, traces and logs, that's where you can find this. So here, there are some quick filters and I can use, say, this one here to find all the Python logs from my job. And then we can see all of those here. And then I can also filter this by severity to say all of the error logs from Python. And we can see that there are in fact a few. And if I click on one of these, this will pop open the details panel. And this shows me the database and schema of and the object that emitted this log. And it is in fact from that sentiment analysis pipeline. And then farther down here, we can see the actual log text written from Python. Unable to process this review, and this was the customer review here. So if we pop open the query ID here from this job. This probably looks familiar if you've used Snowflake. We're looking at the query details and query profile. And then if I pop over to this new tab here called query telemetry, this is where we can see that new trace diagram that I mentioned in the, in the introduction. So here we're seeing the stored procedure execution, the data frame, and those UDFs. So if I click on the top one here, we can see a little bit more information about this, like the name of the object, and it is in fact that stored procedure. And then if I click into span events, this is where I've attached some extra metadata to this job as it was executing. And this has the number of rows and the target table that those rows were written to. And then if I go over to related metrics, here I can see the amount of memory and the CPU that was consumed by Python as this stored procedure was running. And then last but not least, I can see all the logs that were emitted from this stored procedure. Now, if I come down here to the UDF, I can see that there are multiple instances of these UDFs. And that's because behind the scenes, when you call a UDF on Snowflake, Snowflake will automatically spawn multiple instances of those UDFs to parallelize and speed up the processing. So if I click on these and open the details panel, we can see a lot of similar information from before, as well as the number of rows that were processed on each of these instances. And then if I pop over to the related metrics, here I can see the CPU and memory that were consumed by that Python UDF and the Java UDF. And then here's the CPU. Now you'll notice that a couple of these UDFs executed in about a minute and a half, 
and the other ones took just over three minutes. So if I click into one of these spans here, I can see that if I come over to the logs that were written from this, that there are in fact a couple log messages, a couple error logs in fact, that were written from this job. And you'll notice this is the one that we saw from the log explorer in the beginning here. And then there's another new one here that also has an emoji. So this is probably a tip off that my sentiment analysis UDF is not processing emojis correctly. So we're gonna come back and fix this in just a minute. But before we do that, let's keep going down the diagram here. So this span up top, just above the UDFs, this is from a Python data frame that called data frame, and then with column and save as table. And then we can also see the line number that this was executed on, and then the file path where this was called. And in this case, it was uh, called from a notebook cell. So going down the tree just a little bit more, we can see that there's this span called report generation that ran for about 10 seconds. And now interestingly, this is a custom span that I added to my stored procedure. And then this encapsulates where I used matplotlib to generate a report, a PDF, uh, with some summary analysis, and then wrote that to a stage on my Snowflake account. So custom spans allow me to encapsulate any arbitrary Python processing in a stored procedure, and then see how long that that processing takes. All right, so we said a minute ago that this instance here had an issue with those emojis. So let's go over and fix that. Here I have a Snowflake notebook open, and this has the implementation for that sentiment analysis UDF. So what I'll do here is just do a quick find and replace to remove those emojis from the user reviews. And now I'll run this cell. And then down here on line 66, I'm using the Snowpark API to re-register and overwrite that UDF with the correction. And now I can come down here and I can rerun this pipeline to make sure that it runs without any error logs. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned that I had alerts and notifications configured for this job. So if I pop over to my inbox, we can see right here that I've gotten a few notifications as that task was running, showing here that in fact, that job process user reviews emitted 30 error logs in the past hour, and then I can get a nice link right here pointing me back to the query ID where those error logs were emitted from. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the demo. If you wanna get started with these features, check out the links in the description. There's a link to a quick start that shows how to get up and running. And if you wanna learn more about Snowflake Trail, also check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching, have a nice day.